Okay, everybody. Uh, I've just acquired this 40 horsepower Mercury uh, long shaft. And uh, I've just been taking off the wiring harness because the, the wiring harness is completely shot in it. The stator wires, as you can see, are completely gone. I, it didn't look like this before I cut into it, but boy, it, as I started to, it just started to disintegrate. Um, so my plan is to maybe find a new stator for it. I don't think I can repair this. Um, I really doubt it, unless I can get into the stator and, and re-solder new wiring to it. I might give that a try. If not, uh, I'll probably try to look in my one of my groups I belong to, Mercury Groups, and see if somebody's got one. Because eBay and, and MarineNinja.com and all them others, they want an astronomical amount of money for these staters. They're like 300 bucks. And um, and I'm not I'm not putting that kind of money into this motor. I'm gonna try to get running, try to fix it, and that's part of my project now. Um, but as you can see, it's I've removed all the wiring, uh, with the exception of the trigger. I believe that's the trigger wire, and that was in good shape. That was the only thing that was in good shape. If I uh, bring you over here, you can see this is the internal wiring harness, and it is completely toast. I'm, I've got some wire here that might be okay. I might be able to splice in that still looks okay. If I can snip it there and solder wires on, I can duplicate the length and the, and the ends and, and refabricate this. So I think that's my next project. This thing is probably toast. I, this is all bad right up into the, into the molded plastic. So, um, Unless I can just snip it here or, or, or just make a new wiring harness for this and then find a new one of these and just place in. I'll just do that. But uh, the other side of the motor, well, these were the to the coils, this wiring harness here. And again, uh, you can see these are all just frayed and toast. So, so that whole complete wiring harness inside the... Uh, motor is uh, got to be replaced so stay tuned and uh, that's what's coming uh, next so maybe uh, I'll film it maybe I won't but uh, uh, we'll go from here and see what happens now I did I did run a, a compression check on this again um, and initially I got 60 pounds of pressure on the top cylinder so I thought the, the power head was just junk and that this was a parts motor I sprayed some lubricant in there, let it sit for a few days, uh, spun the motor over some more, and then did a compression check, and it came out pretty good. I ended up getting about 185 pounds on each cylinder. Now, that seems a bit excessive now, and I'm not sure if that's just the oil sealing around the rings and causing a, uh, a pre, you know, a premature or a, what would you call it, a fictitious number um, on the uh, on the compression. So I might run another compression check just, you know, as, as those cylinders are purged of any uh, uh, lubricant and just see what I get again. But uh, uh, anyway, I've got the wearing harness off. I can't do anything yet, but I, I think I've got a viable motor here, but I'm not sure. As long as I can replace all these parts, which is probably cost and prohibitive, but I'll see what I can do, and if I can't find those parts or I can't rebuild this uh, wearing harness, I'll just uh, call it a parts motor and give up. So, but I'm going to give it a try. So stay tuned. Okay, just to give you an update, um, this was the old stator, and uh, actually so one of the wires broke off. Actually, two of them did. And I end up taking a measurement on it, and throwing it out. But uh, that's the old stator. And this is the one I purchased from eBay uh, for about 90 bucks. So um, it's a, it's in a little better shape. Uh, I think it'll work. I did an ohms test on it, and it seems to, it seemed to check out okay. Um, so I did uh, an ohms reading on the two yellow wires. I had to actually extend these wires. I had to cut in, splice, and then. Uh, Resolder these wires in and then cover them with shrink wrap and that's what you see here Also, this has been covered with shrink wrap. It was spliced in um, 
This was already spliced in once from the previous owner, so I just covered that up better with shrink, shrink wrap. And then I spliced in this new red line and put the uh, connector back on. So I spliced that in and then uh, shrink wrapped everything. So black, this is the what I thought was a black lead, but really is the blue. And the blue connects up to the power pack on this terminal. So if that looks blue to you. Uh, it doesn't look anything like that color to me. But anyway, uh, again, I put the, uh, I, I soldered the end on, as you can see here. Um, crimped it and then soldered it. And then, uh, of course, I put this this rubber piece back on to protect the, the, the terminal. Anyway, this is the new stator and a new used, new to me, I guess, but uh, a couple of new ends on it. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna get some more shrink wrap, put it over this whole thing and then shrink wrap that all together. So I have uh, some protection on those wires right up into, right up to this connector here. This looks like a pretty flexible. I'd like to stiffen that up a little bit. But uh, that's what's next. Uh, I'll be installing that and then uh, I have to fix this hot wearing harness. This was to the coils from the power pack to the coils. And I believe that's a different gauge wire. I purchased this uh, 16 watt gauge wire off of eBay. It was rated for automotive at high temperature, I think 300 degrees Celsius. And this is all 16 gauge and has all the different colors. So I got that off eBay, which was, uh, which was okay. Uh, I spliced them in here and uh, I think that'll work just fine. Uh, 16 gauge wire should work there. This heart wearing harness on the other hand, I believe is more like a 14 or 12 gauge. It's a little thicker, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for that maybe at the hardware store, or probably at a at a, maybe an automotive store, and uh, pick up some new wire for that. May remake that, put these ends on, and uh, that'll be good to go for the coils. Um, the uh, the wiring harness is next as well. I've got to, I've still got to do that. This wiring harness is still a mess, but uh, probably spent a couple of hours doing that and uh, getting that together. And then once that's all done, I'll assemble it back on the engine and uh, we'll test it for spark. Okay, now the stator is going down like it did over this bracket. So this bracket's got to be in a lined up with the four uh, fastener holes, threaded holes. This should drop down over it. Like so. Yeah. Oh, washer should be adequate. As long as it lines up with these, with these holes, it should be fine. Okay, that's not good and tight. Now this plate went down, grid side down, like that. As long as it lines up with all these bolts.
that's interesting for me. Uh, this is the right over these here. So what's going to happen is, once I do that, the red is going to go to the uh, the red area on the uh, oh, on the CDI or the uh, switch switch box. I don't think it's called the CDI, but it's a Mercury part number three three eight four seven three three eight two. It's a old style, um, but uh, I believe it went on this way. This is our new puppy, new addition. So I thought I'd say hello. This is uh, Macy Gray, and uh, she's only maybe about seven weeks old now. Yeah, but she's a Great Dane, and she's gonna be huge, I think. I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> but she's our our new addition. So I thought I'd say say hello, and uh, I gotta put her in the house. Okay. Here you go. Shut the garage door again. Looks like I've got more current This is kind of a wrap on part one of, uh, of the 40 horse uh, 402 model Mercury. Um, like I say, I've gone through the entire wiring system on this thing, verified the external wiring harness was okay, uh, rewired the internal wiring harness. I still can't get spark on this. Um, now, because this is a CDI, it's not a magneto system per se, like uh, the old style. And I'm really used to working a lot of the older ones. Um, I believe it's because I don't have a, an ignition key to turn on and that activates the, uh, the, the ignition system so that it gets the proper spark. Now that's the only, that's my hunch. So I've got a key on order and it'll be here probably in 10 days or so. And then I'll try the key. I'm not going to try and jump the key. Uh, I don't want to burn up anything. I want to do this correctly and, uh, carefully. So, so I've only got, um, uh, maybe a hundred bucks invested in this motor right now um, between the wiring connectors, the stator I, I, I purchased on eBay. Um, I don't, I hope I don't have to get a new switch box. I think that would be very expensive. Uh, there's probably used one on eBay, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to buy that until I know for sure uh, that the ignition switch is the, my problem. So, or at least the key to turn on the ignition. So, all right, well, stay tuned and thanks for watching. And I appreciate all the subscribers, uh, all the new ones that have just joined. I thank you very much. And all the old ones that are hanging in there with me. So, uh, 
Okay, well stay tuned and uh, more will be revealed. Just to give you a, a heads up on the future prospects here, I've got a, uh, I believe it's a 1970 Johnson. It's a uh, 85 horse, four cylinder. So you can see it's not in too bad a shape. It looks pretty good. I, I don't know if it's even gonna start. Um, I bought it basically with the guy's word on it that he said it fires. Um, so I think everything is there with the exception maybe of this box. I think there's a box that goes over this to protect this electrical. I might be able to find that, I don't know. But uh, the cowling is, is way over there. And, uh, but anyway, I want to give you a, at least a, a heads up of what's coming. Because I'm going to probably, once I get this mercury all set and, said and done, I'm going to start working on this one. So stay tuned and uh, thanks again.